welcome to Tea and Strumpets, a Regency Romance Review. I'm Zoe, and for today's On D, I'm taking it back a while ago because we were talking in the episode about Darling Beast, about gardening and gardeners, and I mentioned Capability Brown. And uh, I actually got a message from a listener afterwards who said, uh, did you know that Capability Brown's name is actually Lancelot Brown? As if the name Capability could get even more interesting. Uh, so today I wanted to talk a little bit about this interesting man and his contribution to English gardening. Um, I think it's really fascinating. In fact, I think it's it's pretty fascinating that there aren't more books about gardening in the Regency era. I feel like, you know, we're, we we see some with blacksmiths and, you know, heroes that have different trades like barrister or, you know, those sorts of things, or even footmen. Uh, but we, we don't see a lot of gardeners. Uh, so if you guys know gardening books, let me know. I would love to read them. Anyhow, so I also thought Capability was such an interesting name, especially in conjunction with the Maiden Lane series, because we have the Makepeace family with temperance and uh, silence, and then you know Capability seems like he would fit right in. But anyhow, we're going to find out a little bit more about Capability's nickname and how he got that in just a little bit. So the other interesting thing is that Capability Brown was around in the contemporary time of our Maiden Lane series, but not in the Regency times, definitely more Georgian times. And his work was actually not particularly revered during the Regency. So let's talk a little bit more about that. Quickly, my sources today are good old Wikipedia, uh, also Architectural Digest, and then uh, the nationaltrust.org.uk. So and those will all be linked in the show notes. So Lancelot Brown was born in 1715 or 16, uh, and more commonly known as Capability Brown, and he was an English gardener and landscape architect who remains the most famous figure in the history of the English landscape garden style. He's remembered as the last of the great English 18th century artists to be accorded his due and, quote, England's greatest gardener. But unlike other architects, including William Kent, he was a hands-on gardener and provided his clients with a full turnkey service, designing the gardens and park, and then managing their landscape and planting. He's most famous for the landscaped parks of English country houses, many of which have survived reasonably intact. However, he also included in his plans pleasure gardens with flower gardens and new shrubberies, usually placed where they were, would not obstruct the views across the park of and from the main facades of the house. Few of his plantings of pleasure gardens have survived later changes. He also submitted plans for much smaller urban projects, for example, the college gardens along the backs at Cambridge. Criticism of his style both in his own day and subsequently mostly centers on the claim that he, quote, quote he created identical landscapes with the main house in a sea of turf, some water, albeit often an impressive feature, and trees in clumps and shelter belts, giving, quote, a uniformity equating to authoritarianism and showing a lack of imagination and even taste on the part of his patrons. He designed more than 170 parks, many of which survive. He was nicknamed Capability because he would tell his clients that their property had, quote, capability for improvement. His parklands for aristocrats, quote, look so natural that we are instantly at ease in them, says Sarah Rutherford, author of the National Trust's book, Capability Brown and His Landscape Gardens. They are practical too, she adds, blending, quote, agriculture, sport, forestry, wildlife havens, recreation, and wonderful settings for magnificent houses. Whether Brown was revamping a ducal house or pondering the possibilities of a somewhat smaller acreage, he compared his craft to writing sentences. Quote, now there, the designer told a friend, I make a comma. And there, where a more decided turn is proper, I make a colon. At another part, where an interruption is desirable to break the view, a parenthesis. Now, a full stop. And then I begin another subject. Thus, the landscapes are Arcadian narratives, explains Fiona Herbert, the Countess of Carnivon, who is researching Brown's undertakings at High Clare Castle, better known these days as Downton Abbey. Quote, the more you understand something, she says, the more you love it. 
I thought those two things were so interesting. Number one, the quote from Capability that he talks about making a garden like writing a sentence. Uh, You know, we're reading all these books here. Uh, And also that High Clare Castle is one of his gardens. So a lot of us have really good reference in our brains to kind of the idea uh, of his landscape. So, of course, there was criticism of his work. Uh, Perhaps his sternest critic was his contemporary, now get this name, Uvedale Price, who likened Brown's clumps of trees to, quote, so many puddings turned out of one common mold. Uh, Russell Page, who began his career in the Brownian landscape of Longleat, but whose own designs have formal structure, accused Brown of, quote, encouraging his wealthy clients to tear out their splendid formal gardens and replace them with his facile compositions of grass, tree clumps, and rather shapeless pools and lakes. The deafness of touch was recognized in his own day. One anonymous obituary writer opined, quote, Such, however, was the effect of his genius, that when he was the happiest man, he will be least remembered. So closely did he copy nature that his works will be mistaken. Sir William Chambers, though he did not mention Brown by name, complained that the, quote, new manner of gardens, quote, differ very little from common fields, so closely is the vulgar nature copied in most of them. Now, one other fact about his life is that he did get married and he had eight or nine children, uh, many, of course, which did not survive till adulthood. But seeing as we are a romance podcast, I did want to put in that little personal fact about his life. So Brown persuaded the rich, famous, and aristocratic to invest the equivalent of millions of pounds in creating landscapes which were beautiful, productive, and could take a century to mature. He copied nature so cleverly that his work is often mistaken for natural landscape. His designs ensured his cl- the client's landscapes resulted in views worthy of a prized landscape painting. So during the 19th century, our Regency and Victorian eras, uh, he was widely criticized, but during the 20th century, his reputation rose again. A festival to celebrate the tercentenary, the 300th anniversary of Brown's birth was held in 2016, and they published a large amount of research on his work and held over 500 events across Britain as part of the celebrations. And the Garden Trust, with support from Historic English, public from Historic England, published Vulnerability Brown, Capability Brown Landscapes at Risk, to review the issues facing the survival of these landscapes as well as suggested solutions. Many of Capability Brown's parks and gardens may still be visited today. The National Trust cares for nearly 20 of Brown's designed landscapes. Many of these are among some of his most significant works, including Stowe in Buckinghamshire, Chrome or Croom in Warch, oh gosh, Oh dear, uh, Worcestershire. It's Wor- Worcestershire. 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 Uh, I I think I got it. Maybe in one of those. And Barrington Hall in Herd. Oh dear, Herefordshire. Ha- Herefordshire. Herefordshire. I don't know. If you're from there, let me know. Uh, These were complex designs encompassing the landscape and architectural features. So anyhow, I hope that you found this little snippet about Capability Brown as fascinating as I do. I think that when you think about English landscape, you probably don't realize that you are thinking about his designs. And if you've been to anywhere in England, you've probably been to many of the places that he did design. The fact that he had his hand in at least 170 properties means that If you've gone to anywhere cool in London, England, anywhere, the surrounding areas, you've probably been or seen some of his works. Um, It's pretty impressive and interesting, and I just wanted to highlight him for our On D today. So we'll be back into your feeds very soon, and we look forward to sharing our next episode with you. In the meantime, if you want to get in touch with us, where we are on social media, we are at Tia's and Tom and as a Nancy Strumpets, and our email is romancepod at gmail.com. If you have any uh, corrections, uh, pronunciation or otherwise, or thoughts, uh, we love to hear from all of our listeners. So thank you so much for listening and may all your ever afters end happily. Mm-hmm.